Latsat Kundalonga Kule Rajamanam Namam is far and Rupam Latsat Kundal Homgo Kule Rajamanam Latsat Yasoda be all the Kadhavaham Param Smita Yanta to the Katya Gopya Yasoda be all the Param Smita Yantyatta Dityatya Gopya Rudam Tamu Hurnetra Yugvam Rijantam Karam Boja Yudmena Satatinatam Karam Boja Yudmena Moho Swasa Kampati Rekanta Kanta Stitai Kavodhamadharam Bhakti Bharam He takes the Sali Lavi, Hananda Kunde, Swagosham, Mayantam, Apayantam. And Tadi A. Sitai Jaisu, Bhaktai Sitai Tam. Puna Premas Tam Satya Tavriti Vande Puna Premas Tam Bharam Devam Hukshanam Hukshana Vinva Nacham Vindeham Sare Sarapiha Eiram te vapurnata gopala bhalam Saram he manyasta virastam ke manyai Saram Eiram te kokam boja ananta dear lai Vitam kundalai smigdha vaktai shagopya Mohoschum bitam bimba haktam dram he Manasta virastam alam vaksya lovedhai Namo devo damo dharananta vishno Pasira pavo dukkha jalagni magnam Pasita Prabhupada Jalagni Ram Kripadrasti Vasyati Dina Vatanu Griham Nemjamok Ave Matsasya Dristyai Griham Nemjamam Ajam Ekshasya Kuvair Ahmad Yobandham Muktai Vyadban 
Dvajajimochito bhakti bhakto krito cha Dvayamochito bhakti Em tatha prema bhaktim svakham mech priyacha Namaksha graho mesti namodareha Namaste to Dhamne Spurha Dipti Dhamne Dadi Dio Rayatta Vishwasya Dhamne Dadi Dio Rayatta Vishwasya Dhamoradi Gaya Tvadhyay Prihai Hai Dhamonatal Hilaya Devaya Tu Dham Hey, kai hai, hai 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 Ananda Rupam, Lasak Koko Hoko, Hedrajaranam, Mami Sadam Sit, Ananda Rupam, Lasak Kundal Hoko, Hedrajaranam, Mami Sadam Sit, Ananda Rupam, Lasak Kundal Hoko, Hedrajaranam, Ananda Rupam, Hey, I saw the be all look at Havam, Haram, Haram's retired at the toad that you go Params will adhyat tat to jithyat ya gopya Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Ha Hare Ram Ha Ram Ha Ram Ha Ha Hare 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 Bolo Hare Ram Ha Hare Ram Ha Ram Ha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram Ha, Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha Ram Ha, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha, Ram Ha, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram Ha, Hare Ram Ha, Ram Ha, Ram Ha, Hare Hare Ram. Let's go. 
हे हारे कृष्ण हार हर सिन्ह हर सार सार हे हरे हम 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 हरे हे घर हे हारे कृष्ण हे कृष्ण कृष्ण हे हरे हम हरे हम 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 हरे हे कृष्ण 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 गौर हे हारे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हे हरे राम हरे राम राम हम हरे हे कृष्ण कृष्ण Devo O oh, glory to the holy name O oh, glory to the holy name. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hey, hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. The tiger, go! The tiger, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Hey, the tiger, go to pray one day. The tiger, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. झमुरार राधा झमुरार Hey Kishor Kishori Kishor Kishori Kishor Kishori Jai Kishor Kishor Hey Jai Kishor Kishori Kishor Kishori Kishor Kishori Jai Kishor Kishor Hey Jai Radhe Jai Radhe Jai Radhe Jai Shri Radhe Hmm Wow And the Tiger Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hey Hey Hare Tiger Hare 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 Tiger Jai Jai Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jai Prabhu Pa Jai Prabhu Pa Hey 
Jai Jai Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jai Prabhu Pa Gaur Prema Nandi Hari Hari Sisi Radha Dhamu Dhar Ki Jai cheeks of your blackish lotus face, which is encircled by locks of curling hair, have become redden like bimba fruit due to mother <coughs> Yashoda's kisses. What more can I describe than this? Millions of opulences are of no use to me, but may this vision constantly remain in my mind. the entire universe was created by Lord Brahma, who was born from your abdomen, which was bound with rope by Mother Yasoda. To this rope I offer my humble obeisances, I offer my obeisances to your most beloved Ratarani, and to your unlimited pastime. Shishi Radha Damodar Ki
Marva. Jai. Bhakti Vidan 
Shankar Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Skan Founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Raj Granta, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Damudar Ki Jai. Sri Sri Ki Shor Ki Shori Ki Jai. Sri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Sri Sri Gaur Nittai Ki Jai. Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Tai Go Premanandi. Glories to the assembled devotees. Glories to the assembled devotees. Glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Or is a guru in Garanga. So, continuation with little discussion on japa. We've been every day trying to see what we can reveal in the treasure house of the holy name. It's a treasure. It's an unlimited treasure. And the thing about this treasure is then once you start spending it, it increases. In other words, when you spend it or you use it, give it or use it either way, it increases. What thing in the material world increases when you use it? Maybe a disease. That's about it. (laughs) That's about all I can think of. So spiritually, the holy name is always fresh and always increasing. So Srila Sanatana Goswami explains that um, there are six points or tips that he gives for what we say good japa. And one thing he says is mauna. Mauna means silence. Of the 26 qualities that are mentioned of a Vaishnava, the Vaishnava has 26 qualities. One of the last ones is silent. What does silent mean? Silent means silent materially. (laughs) No material nonsense or talk. And talk only of spiritual topics things related to Krishna and Krishna's service, like that. So, if the mind is engaged in useless and nonsensical talks throughout the day, it will also affect our ability to chant the holy name and when it's time to chant. <clears throat> in the scriptures it's mentioned that Atasi Krishna Namari Nabhavet Drayam Indriya Seva Vokehi Jivado Jivado means tongue, swayameva sparatada, that one cannot reach to the transcendental level, but one can approach the transcendental level through using the tongue or chanting the holy names of the Lord, like that. So when the tongue is engaged in transcendental activities, two things, vibrating and eating, eating only Krishna Prashad, Uh, food offered to the Lord with devotion and accepted as the mercy of the Lord, and only vibrating those sounds which are beneficial, as it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, 16th chapter, 17th chapter, I'm sorry. Krishna gives the austerities of speech, and he says to speak truthfully, beneficially, avoid speech that offends, regularly recite scripture to back up what one says. In other words, to give authority to one's talk. If one just talks about what's on their mind, who cares? (laughs) The mind is just going everywhere anyway. The mind can skirt the universe and come back in a few seconds and gather so much garbage, and then we think, oh, it's so nice. It's like garbage collecting, you know, (laughs) collecting garbage. But therefore, one should speak only truthfully, beneficially, and and about Krishna consciousness. So you might also say, well, yes, I have a job. I work in this material world. My associates are non-devotees. 
and therefore we have to come converse in order to carry on the business of the, the work. Now that's what we say permissible within the certain range of, of permissibility. It means that it should be done just as what's necessary and that's all. Silence sort of helps to control the mind or helps to go one, go deeper. So one of the qualities of a Vaishnava is thoughtfulness, to be thoughtful or to be grave. Gray gravity is another quality of the mind where one is thinking about the goal of life, about Krishna consciousness activities, about Krishna. And then that means one is starting to go deeper into the process of devotional life. So thoughtfulness is there. In this world, everyone likes to speak. <laughs> we have so many technological gadgets that just broadcast sound. <laughs> and sometimes the sound is so loud and so offensive that it's, it's like being killed. <laughs> Worse than being killed sometimes. So, therefore, one should be very conscious, this is the word, of the process of speak and speak truthfully, beneficially, and avoid speech that offends. Uh, one should speak sweetly when it's required and speak strongly when it's required. Strongly means one should speak on the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and back it up with spiritual or scriptural evidence like that. And by practicing proper speech, then one can practice chanting with more effectiveness. In other words, the, the, your holy, the holy name will be more easier to chant. Srila Madhavendra Puri would never like to travel with anyone because that way he could remain silent and think of Krishna and chant the holy names. Because he would think, if I have to be with something, then somebody, then we talk. <laughs> so sometimes they say in the material world, talk is cheap. <laughs> and it's not only cheap, it's dangerous. It's most dangerous to one's spiritual life. Sometimes we used to say, and you remember the old days of Krishna consciousness, the tongue can take you to Krishna or it can take you to hell. <laughs> That's true. So one should be, what we say, very conscious and cautious to speak only what is necessary and use one's speech to... And Prabhupada makes a very interesting point. Actually, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, one can control the process of speaking when one regularly speaks about Krishna. Now, this is a very philosophical point that this process of speaking becomes controlled when one learns to regularly speak about Krishna. And then the mind becomes adept to speaking about Krishna and Krishna consciousness activities and will naturally not gravitate to these mundane things. So we can't avoid speaking, but therefore we're not Moni Babas. <laughs> you know, they have these Babas in India. They carry signs around with them or chalkboards or, or signs. It says, please give two chapatis. <laughs> now. <laughs> and Prabhupada says, that's not Moni. They're still speaking. The mind is talking. They're writing. Right. So that is another form of speech. They call themselves Moni Babas. <laughs> there was one Baba, I forgot his name. He left the world... And he, he was silent for 25 years. So Prabhupada said, that's good, because they have nothing to say anyway. <laughs> so it's better to keep quiet. <laughs> this person was trying to glorify this person. Prabhupada said, that's very good. Usually they have nothing to say, so I better keep quiet. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of times that's true. <laughs> a lot of times that's true. So practice uh, speaking about Krishna devotional service and then it becomes what we say easier to control the mind and senses when it's time to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Okay, any questions related to that?
or about japa in general? Yes, what's your name? Peter, Hare Krishna. I asked him about that. It's His Holiness Sanchi Nandana Maharaj, who's been, who's actually made chanting. He brought back chanting to ISKCON in the last ten years. He started these drapa retreats first in Europe and then in America. Now he's doing kirtan retreats all over. We have seven days of kirtans now. Um, he's really absorbed in the holy name constantly, day and night. He writes about it. He, and I asked him about that. He said there's a philosophical meaning to that particular thing that in order to approach Krishna, we have to approach Krishna through Radharani also. So, therefore, by emphasizing our approach with Radharani, we can also access the mercy of Krishna. But then he also says that, you know, practically speaking, this is not philosophic, but practically, when you catch the first word, or, then it's easier to catch the rest of the sound. Usually, just like now, here's an experiment. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So think back, what, what word did you catch me on? Did you, were you right there at the first Hare when I said that? No, usually not. Sometimes it takes you to, to, to the last Hare at the end. To, sometimes we, the mind is saying, oh, there's something to do here. <laughs> so it takes a little while to get, to get up to speed, as they say. So it's like that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. It's just the nature of the mind, that's all. The nature of the uncontrolled mind. And so we definitely need to practice hearing, and therefore this is one way to what we say. Now if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. But it seems to work for most people. And he's been emphasizing that, and I've tried it. This morning I really tried it more than any time, and I found it really, really helpful today, more than any day. Sometimes the mind is more easier to connect with the holy name, and sometimes the mind is more wild. It's just the way it is. It's the mind or it's the modes of material nature. So sometimes we find variations in our ability to chant, so... Therefore, this morning I found it a little bit more difficult, so by emphasizing the Hare, I found it easier to chant, <laughs> or more easier to hear, I mean, like that. But it's not a Kali Yuga thing. <laughs> no, it's actually, um, the, the process of devotional service is the process of taking the knowledge given by Krishna and the Acharyas and realizing that knowledge and through realization, coming up with what we say more newer and ideas on the process of devotional service that is not against the principles, but is realizations that come by way of practice. <clears throat> it's not like all the knowledge has been given, but the realizations come by way of practice. So even in realizations, we get more knowledge from the realizations. So it's not like we've reached the end of all knowledge and everything is there. The practice has been given. That cannot be changed. But Mahajano Yena Katasapanta, the scriptures say that the, uh, the truth of the truth of all religious scriptures are hidden in the hidden in the hearts of the self realized soul. So those who are self-realized, they can, they can tell you what is truth because they have realized the truth through practice like that. So, 
So devotees get realizations. We can share, we should share our realizations with others. But they have to be, what's the difference between a realization and just the mind's speculation? It has to be in line with Shastra and Guru and Sadhu. It shouldn't be different or outside of that. Like that. Okay, anything else on Japa before we begin class? Yes, Mataji? Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. When you were talking about silence, I was uh, thinking that even when I'm not speaking, it feels as if like I'm speaking in silence. In the mind. Yeah. Like constantly. That little mouse is going. Even when you're chanting. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Ah, 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 ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's just like it, 24-7, it's flying high, you know. Even when you're sleeping, it's going, but you can't hear it. <laughs> so that's the nature of the mind. So, yeah. It'll stop. It'll slow down as, you, as your mind becomes more and more, what we say, spiritualized. And then it becomes easier, where there's just the sound of spiritual sound vibrations. Uh, right now, just turn down the volume, <laughs> shut it off, and unplug it. <laughs> Don't listen to it. That's that's what Prabhupada talks about in controlling the mind, learning how to neglect these, what we say, petitions, desires of the rattling mind. You just have to learn how to ignore it. If you understand you're not the mind then you also understand what's coming from the mind is not necessarily coming from you or coming from what is beneficial. You have to learn to separate your mind from yourself and see the difference. How do you do that? By discriminating based on Shastra and Guru. (laughs) And then there's practical common sense too. We also have to use practical common sense. Prabhupada said devotional service is common sense. (laughs) That's also there. So learning how to uh, bring in the proper thoughts at the same time pushing out all these other things. And it's just the mind wanting certain things, satisfaction or attention like that. Especially attention, when you start chanting, it wants attention. Yes, Richard? You can't help looking at things. You should not be looking at them in the wrong way. So then when we are looking at something in the wrong way or, you know, according to our philosophy, uh, it appears, you're you're wondering, okay, where is this behavior coming from in relationship to Krishna? You know, are these thought processes... Well, it's either in, it's either in relationship to Krishna or not in relationship to Krishna. Like, if you see something and you don't see it connected to the source, that's material. If you see it in connected to the source, that's spiritual. And so, just connect everything to Krishna because everything is connected to Krishna anyway. Everything in this material world, bhumir apanalobayu, kamana budevacha. Ahankar itiyame bina prakriti astada. Krishna says, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, they're all my separated energies. What is the next verse? Aparayam vidi, aparayam vidi param jiva bhuta mahabalo yayedam dayate jagat. But there's another energy which makes up the spiritual energy which includes all living beings. So there's two energies. They're both Krishna's energy, the spiritual and the material. So seeing, th- seeing things separate from Krishna means to see things materially. These things connected to Krishna means to see things spiritual. 
how do you connect things to Krishna? Either by making the mental connection that this is Krishna's energy, it's working under Krishna's direction, or you take that energy and you engage it in Krishna's service, and then and that is devotional service. And so, there's nothing outside of Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavatam, he doesn't speak many verses in the Bhagavatam, but the chapter sloki verses, he says, before the, before the creation, I existed. During the manifest, no, before the creation, only I exist. During the manifestation, it is I that exists. And after the annihilation, it is I that remains. So Krishna is everything. But Krishna is divided into two understandings, his spiritual energy and his material energy. But for Krishna, there's nothing material. Everything is spiritual. We see materially, he doesn't. He sees everything as his energies, but they're working differently, that's all. It's like an electrician can employ the electricity to work in different ways according to the receptacle that it's connected to. Same electricity, but it's, it's, it's heating or it's cooling or it's giving power. It's doing different things, but it's all the same energy. So the, the material energy is also Krishna's energy, but it works in a different way, that's all. Selfish. No, it's not a good one. It means cut off. Material means cut off from. Selfish, no. I don't think that's a good analogy for the word material. Selfish means... You can see this. This is Krishna's material energy. You can see it like that. But selfish means to use it for your own self-interest. Then it's selfish. It doesn't make the energy selfish. The energy is not selfish. It's the use of it. And that's the person, not the energy. That's the living being who becomes selfish. The energy is never selfish. This energy is actually beneficial in the sense that it's helping us to realize Krishna by giving us difficulty. <laughs> there's the uncle, there's the father. The father is loving, the uncle, he's difficult. He might chastise you. Then you run to your father for protection from the nasty uncle. <laughs> so the material energy is kicking us so we run to Krishna for shelter. And therefore, this energy is good. When we get tired of being kicked, then we run to Krishna. And then we get away, then Krishna says, oh, it's okay, and then you go back and get kicked again. <laughs> we get kicked over and over. So it's the energy is beneficial because it's considered maya, and maya is Krishna's energy, and she's a pure devotee. Sisti, stisti, palaya, sadaveka, chayeva, vivati, durga, ichana, rupa, apayas, chastate, sa, govindam, mari purusham, tamaham bhajanmi. So. Material energy is called chaya. The material energy is called chaya. Chaya means shadow. So this energy is a reflection of the reality. In the spiritual world, there's also forms and activities and buildings and roads and trees and so many things. But that's real. Here, what you see is a reflection of the reality. So this energy is existing, but it's simply a reflection. And you can't enjoy the reflection. You can enjoy only the reality. <laughs> so trying to enjoy the reflection means to get kicked. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> There's no enjoyment here. And we'll hear it from this verse. This verse is really nice. I'm going to get to the verse because it's really a good verse. Okay. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 4, Chapter 31, Narada's instructions, instructs the Prachetas, verse 6. Yadadishtam Bhagavata Shivenando Sajainacha Tadgriheshu Prasaktanam Prayasa Shapitam Prabho Yadadishtam Bhagavata Shivan no doksha jaina cha Tadgriheshu prashaktanam Prayasha shapitam prabho Yadadisham bhagavata Shivan no doksha jaina cha Tadgriheshu prashaktanam Prayasa shapitam prabho Ladies, <laughs> yet what Adishtam was instructed, Bhagavata. By the exalted personality, Shivena, Lord Shiva, Ahoksajena, by Lord Vishnu, Cha, also, Tat, that, Grihesu, to family affairs, Prashaktanam, by us who were too much attached, Prayasa, almost, Shapitam, forgotten, Prabhu, O Master. Translation, O Master, may we inform you that because of our being overly attached to family affairs, we almost forgot the instructions we received from Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Remaining in family life is a kind of concession for sense enjoyment. One should know that sense enjoyment is not required, but one has to accept sense enjoyment in as much as one has to live. As confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.10, Kaimastra Indriya Priti. One has to become a Goswami and control his senses. One should not simply use his senses for sense gratification. Rather, the senses should be employed just as much as required for maintaining the body and soul together. <coughs> Srila Rupa Goswami recommends Ananda Shaktasya Visayan Yaryatam Upayunjate. One should not be attached to sense objects, but one should accept sense enjoyment as much as required, no more. <coughs> 
If one wishes to enjoy the senses more than require, he becomes attached to family life, which means bondage. All the prachetas admitted their fault in remaining in household life. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Jaitanya Mano Bistam Stabditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuntananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So, <clears throat> the Prachetas are feeling a little bit unhappy because they practically forgot the instructions given by Lord Vishnu coming from Lord Shiva. <laughs> they became too much attached to their family situation. So, family life, as mentioned here, is a kind of concession for sense enjoyment. Whereas the living entity has an eternal loving relationship with God, which is, not, is eternal and always enjoyable. When the, material, when, the, when the living entity comes to the material world, the living entity looks for happiness in material things because one has a material body. So this material body requires some satisfaction. So then there's eating, sleeping, mating, and defending the four activities of the material body. So regulating these things allows one to practice devotional service in such a way that one can move forward on the path back home, back to Godhead. So regulation is the key, the key word that we're trying to emphasize here. So in every ashram, the word ashram means place of spiritual cultivation. So there are four ashrams, brahmacharya, and we also have the counterpart, brahmacharini. We have what is called grihasta, we have vanaprast, and sannyas. These four ashrams are places of spiritual cultivation, and one must enter into one of the ashrams and practice devotional service according to the principles given at in that ashram. Um, following one's ashram means following the process of devotional service. So there is a slight difference between rules, regulations, and requirements for each of the ashrams. Three of the ashrams, there's no sexual activity allowed, and that is in Brahmachari, Brahmacharini, in Vanaprast and in Sannyas. <clears throat> in Grihasta Ashram, there is a concession for sex life, which is, means allowed to in, engage in that activity, but only for the procreation of children, to bring up children in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, there's no need for such activities. <clears throat> When Prabhupada was explaining these principles back in the early days of the Krishna Conscious Movement, <laughs> one very senior devotee, in fact, it was the first devotee who met Prabhupada, and that was His Grace um, Hayagriva Prabhu, who was the first person to actually see Prabhupada in America, New York, actually, at least in the Hare Krishna movement. And Prabhupada was talking about, you know, sex life has to be regulated in marriage for once a month. And only at the time when conception is the most opportune time. And then when conception is, is given, then that is stopped for one year until the child is born. And then six months after the child is born. And then one can engage again and for the same reason to bring about Krishna consciousness children. So when, when Hayagriva heard Prabhupada's explanation, he said, what's once a month? Well, what's the use? Prabhupada said, very good boy, you have understood. <laughs> what's the use, even, even once a month? It's concessionary. If one can do without it, then it's easier, or we might say more direct, to follow the process of Krishna consciousness. 
one can focus all their time and energy and uh, attention on the process of devotional service. But for most people in Kali Yuga, especially in this age, Grihastha Ashram is re a requirement. So in that Grihastha Ashram, one has to follow these rules and regulations. It's not that a, a Grihastha is less than other ashrams, it's just that there is concessions for sense, grat sense enjoyment, but in a regulated way. And that's the key. It, it has to be done in a regulated way. Because without regulated way, then one becomes what we say, grihamedi. We have the example in the Shastras of Priyavrata Maharaj. <clears throat> now, Priyavrata Maharaj was the son of King Uttanapada, whose father was Swayambhuva Manu. There was two, no, he was the brother of King Uttanapada, and their father was Swayambhuva Manu. There was a problem in the universe in that there was no one to do the work of the sun god. The sun god has a very responsible activity. He has to maintain the revolution of the sun accordingly. If you could actually see it, and there are devotees who have actually seen that if you look up in the sun, there's a person who's riding on the chariot who's directing the movements of the sun. <laughs> He's a very golden, but we can't see that with these eyes. You can actually, some people can actually see it. There are people who worship the sun god and the sun god reveals himself to them. So there's a person who's in charge of maintaining the sun's activities within the universe. There was nobody to do the work. Priyavrata had taken up lifetime of brahmachari life. He said, I'm not getting married. I'm going to stay in brahmachari and finish my life in devotional service that way. Lord Brahma searched along with Maswayam Bhuvanmanu to find someone who was qualified to do the work nobody could find. The only one who was qualified was Priyavrat. <laughs> he was the only one. So, uh, Swayam Bhuvamanu pleaded with his son, please take up the work. He said, no way, I'm not going to do that because to do this service, you have to be in Grihastha Ashram. You have to be married. I don't want to get married. <clears throat> I want to remain Brahmachari. He couldn't dissuade his son so Narada Muni came and also spoke to him. He couldn't do it either. He was fixed. I'm going to remain brahmachari. Finally, they said, we got to use some stronger methods to get this person to change. <laughs> so they called Lord Brahma himself, <laughs> the father of Narada, the guru of Narada, and the CEO of the universe. Finally, he came and he approached and he spoke with him very convincingly and said, don't worry, when you do your work, you can also get detached from household life from that and go back to brahmacharya afterwards. Finally, he realized the Lord is actually asking me to do this service. He got married. And he did the work, he did the service so expertly that everyone was saying, wow, he's as good as any sun god. He did this service so expertly. But he got married to a very beautiful and qualified wife. And she was the perfection of personal service. We can speak about this too also. That in household life, if, a woman, if the wife serves the husband very nicely, then the marriage works nicely. Uh, a marriage breaks down when the women don't understand the men. <laughs> Haribo. I know you don't like that one, but anyway, that's, sh <laughs> that's Shastra. <laughs> if the woman serves the husband nicely, the w husband is so inclined to give himself to the wife. And she has to use her charm, her sweetness, her service, and her abilities to capture him. And when she does, and he will, what we say, do whatever he can to please her. That's household life. <clears throat> Nowadays it just doesn't work, does it? <laughs> too many things to do and therefore women are doing so many things not taking care of their husbands properly right and the husbands are also maybe not as good as you know the ideal husband so it's sometimes a little difficult 
for women to come to that standard. And this is a whole different topic, and I won't get into it in detail because it's actually a seminar, and there's a very lot of discussion on this. But the point is made that she, she served him so nicely that he became very much inclined to his wife, and he became controlled by his wife. Here's the key. You want to control men, just serve them nicely. Really, they'll, this is the way to control them. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> you control with love. <laughs> anyway, so he became somewhat like a puppet in her hands, and he became somewhat attached to his wife in a material way. And although he wanted to remain brahmachari his whole life, even in Grihastha life, he was slipping from the standard. And it was noted. It was noted not only by himself, by others. And it said that he had to be, always say, hey, you know, like Priyavrat, you're becoming henpecked. You know? it's, you know, you're getting overly attached to your wife. It's not so nice. You know, and it's also the shun is maybe a little shaking a little bit every once in a while. <laughs> I'm just adding that in there anyway. <laughs> Little embellishment, which are good for pastimes. But the point was, it was coming out in his service too. <laughs> and he was noting it. <laughs> so that was a problem. So finally he became a little sober, understood the problem, corrected it, and then went on with his service. And then later on, of course, he produced a child, and that was King Agnidra. His son was Agnidra, and Agnidra was really henpecked. Oh, he was really controlled by his wife. That's a whole other story, anyway. Read the fifth canto. Fifth canto, read the very, I forgot what chapter that is. That's the very beginning. First chapters. In, oh, we're getting right into it. Priyavrat, yeah, yeah, the next chapter. I'm pre previewing of the up and coming suspense. <laughs> which is really nice. So anyway, here's an example of although a person may get into household life and as a duty, one can slip from the duty and fall into what we say an, a mood of enjoyment or a mood of over-detachment. Over-detachment means you don't take care of your wife nicely the wife doesn't serve the husband nicely because they're afraid of getting attached to each other. So there's this balance. We see marriages break up because either too much sense gratification or not enough developing the relationship based on religious principles. There's a medium to find that. And, and the, the rules and regulations teach us how to act in every situation and how to develop that. So here's an example here that there's a danger in household life. What is that danger? The danger is one can start to use the Grihasta ashram for sense enjoyment. And then one loses their enthusiasm for devotional service. Because when one goes in that way, then Krishna consciousness becomes a lot more difficult. And so, and the... Oh, I had another point. Oh, this was a good point. And the other aspect of that is that... Hmm. Oh, I can't. I forgot what I was going to say. It was really good, too. <laughs> anyway, Kali Yuga. Manda Sumanda Mateo Manya Bhagya Padrita. Memory gets shortened. Anyway, in in that... What we say, oh, okay, but there's the danger in brahmachari life too, and brahmacharini life is that one's mind is not stable in devotional service, and one is looking around towards sense gratification. And Krishna talks about that in Bhagavad Gita, that one may be externally making a show of devotional service, but internally still thinking about sense enjoyment. And Krishna calls that person. A pretender, a pretender, that 
they really they're they're wearing the colors but acting in a different way so so therefore there's a danger there also too that's why um grihasta ashram is considered the safe boat to cross the ocean of material because one focuses their attention on one's wife or husband and follows the principles and develops detachment in that in ashram <clears throat> as opposed to one who is not following it but it's still pretending to be renounced so therefore there's the benefit of grihasta ashram but the the pitfall of grihasta ashram is that one can get overly attached to that situation get comfortable and get what we say enamored by sensual opportunities that's brought out in the seventh canto Prahlad Maharaj describes that in very detail when he's preaching to his schoolmates about, you know, how a householder is enamored by all the activities and amenities of household life and then becomes illusioned by those things and starts to think in terms of Janasa Moham Yamaham Mameti, that this is mine and this is I. This is the danger of household life, is that you start thinking, this is my wife, this is my husband, this is my property, this is my money, this is my children, this is my bank balance, I and mine. Janasa moham, moha. Moha means illusion. Nothing belongs to us. We are using it, and it has a purpose in our life, but the proprietor of everything is the Supreme Lord. Krishna owns everything. Everything belongs to Krishna. So, the uh, Prachetas, somehow or other, they were saying, we stayed in household life too long, we got enamored, we forgot the instructions of Lord Shiva, who gave them instructions to actually to become detached from this whole thing. And now, you're coming along, Narada Muni, and you're reminding us what it is. Sometimes it's like that. Someone, the spiritual master will give you an instruction. And in due course of time, we may not either follow it perfectly or follow it wrongly, half-heartedly, and then someone else will come along and remind us in one way or the other. So that's, that's mercy. That's actually Krishna coming through that other person to remind us <clears throat> about the importance of following our ashram properly. But it says also here that ultimately one has to leave that ashram and what we say, move on to renunciation. So how Grihasta ashram is not a permanent thing. We see in the material world, people die in that ashram. If you die married, then who do you remember? Your wife, your husband, your children, that's the last thought of your mind. The fourth canto describes that. You probably just read that. How the pitiful householder, he's, he's dying, he's still making plans, telling his wife what she should do after he goes, right? Make sure you pay the rent, you know, <laughs> so many other things. <laughs> he's still giving instructions, but he's not going to be around. <laughs> so so that's, that's attachment. He's still trying to manage things, still trying to live his way through, you know, the fact that he's going, but he still wants to be around. Can't face the fact. <clears throat> so there's a danger in that. So one has to move out of that gradually and then ultimately be detached from that. Therefore, in Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talks about first Grihasta, uh, Vanaprastha life, and then Sanyas. And there's four stages of Sanyas. Uh, Kutichak, Bahudak, Pariva, Chakacharja, Paramahansa. Uh, Kutichak means one uh, still living in the village, but don't, doesn't the, the, the wife still brings food to the... They live separately, but he, she brings him food, cooks his meals. That's called Kutichak. There is no physical contact at that time. Bahudak then he's still living in the village, but she no longer associates with him. He no longer associates with her. And then Pravijbrakacharya means he goes out and starts to preach and travel. 
And then Paramahansa says that when preaching becomes mature and perfect, and then one can sit down and do nirjan bhajan, and one can absorb themselves in thoughts of Krishna and ultimately leave the world and add consciousness and attain, you know, pure devotional service at that stage. So, if you understand Krishna consciousness, you understand that there is a systematic process to gradually move forward to the goal of life. You can't charge the gates of heaven, <laughs> as they say. The gates of the spiritual world have, door, have, have handles on the inside, not on the outside. <laughs> it means you have to be let in. You can't open it from your side. So therefore, we'll, we'll become qualified to be let in when we follow the process of devotional service. So, there, so Grihastha life is very important, and it's a good opportunity to develop detachment and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. But there's a danger. There's a danger in all ashrams, but especially in Grihasa life, there's a lot of dangers. Okay, any questions? Yes, Asraya Prabhu. Here's a detached householder who will ask a question. <laughs> Thank you for your blessings, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> it was... That was the intention. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <Mara. laughs> Again. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, while there are the religious principles that are meant to be followed because it helps us to achieve gradual detachment, so there's a proper way to follow every ashram according to scriptural direction. Um, just my kind of experience and observation is that because... We're practically animals, you know, not even like cultured people when we come to Krishna consciousness. It's, it's almost like a lifetime of work just to try to get into that culture as opposed to just focusing on whatever way we can get engaged yeah. in devotional service. So for, um, you know, this kind of Kali Yuga person, you know, what's the, um, what's the, should we just try our best to understand the principles of that and extract that and utilize it, you know, for our benefit? Or is it really important to come to the stage of that form of ashram? Mm. This, your question can be answered from different perspectives. Uh, the ideal perspective is that we need community. <clears throat> And community helps to fortify our practice of devotional service when we get support from others who are practicing the same thing. And that's why Prabhupada wanted these communities so devotees can live together and share resources and also share labor and also share realizations on how to live. So that's the ideal situation. When, but as far as the practice itself, one has to cultivate the mood of detachment. And how do you do that? By seeing everything in this material world as simply two ways. You can either see it as an, something you can use in devotional service or something that should be avoided. If you can't use it in devotional service, it should be avoided. So in relationship to our grihat, there's responsibilities. But our happiness is not in the grihasta ashram. Our happiness is in devotional service, which means chanting, hearing, associating with devotees, kirtan, prasadam, philosophy, going to holy places, like that. There's where we find spiritual enthusiasm and, and joy. Not in managing your household. <laughs> if you manage your household in a Krishna conscious way, then it becomes nice. But the idea is, as Prabhupada says here, if one wishes to enjoy the senses more than required, that's the point he mentions over and over. Sense satisfaction is required, but not more. So then there you have to see what you need to keep body and soul together and not more. If you go beyond that, then you fall into the mood of what we say, 
you fall into the mode of passion. If you go under that, then you can't properly execute your spiritual life. So you have to find that balance. So as far as living, Prabhupada said, live simply. Now how do you live simply in this society? It's very difficult because there's so many challenges and so many apparent necessities and requirements. But Prabhupada said live simply. So he wanted these farm communities where grihastas, well, farm communities are for grihastas. The brahmacharis should be tra traveling and preaching. The sannyasis should be doing the same thing. For the brahmacharis to stay in the temples all day, they'll fall into maya, no doubt. <laughs> and for the grihastas, unless they're really maintaining their, their griha and doing devotional service, they get they start looking towards other things for happiness, like going to the movies or watching television or just surfing the net or something. <laughs> they get bored. <laughs> so we have to somehow or other understand what we need to do like that. But in a philosophical way, we should see that everything ultimately is meant for Krishna's service like that. Bhakti, we we take lessons from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He was the ideal grihasta. He had a wife and ten children, but still he was so Krishna conscious that he never gave much time to his family affairs. But still, the family was satisfied because in that time it was quality. There was always quality time with the family. And then, he, but he spent most of his time writing books or doing his services like that. So that's, if a wife is engaged in devotional service, if the husband's engaged in devotional service, Papa said, the house is Vaikuntha. Then Lakshmi is personally present there. <laughs> but if one of them are not, it wants you know, material enjoyment, then it becomes, the whole thing becomes difficult for both, you know. Read that book, Four Goals of Family Life, by Jagannath, Jagannath Desi Chwar. It is so comprehensive. It's been reviewed by many, many devotees with excellent reviews. It's an ideal book to get a little bit of a better pattern or a blueprint on how to live in Grihastha life. We need support. Especially in Kali Yuga, it's so difficult this age. Very difficult age. All the ashrams are challenged. <clears throat> That's why community makes things easier, or more, what we say makes things doable. Kali Yuga is such a bad age. It's so bad. <laughs> right? And there's nothing good about this age except the holy name. <laughs> So every, every ashram is challenged hard by the presence of Kali Yuga. <laughs> Sannyasis keep money. Grihastas fail to give in charity. Brahmacharis are dirty. And, um, and Vanaprastas fail to go to the forest. <laughs> There's... They're, they're, they're city dwellers. <laughs> Vana prasta means dweller. Vana, vana means forest. <laughs> so if you can't find a forest, you know, make one yourself. <laughs> Just build a forest in your house. Put some trees, some brush, <laughs> something. So these four defects are there, inherent in the, the ashrams in Kali Yuga, like that. You go into a brahmachari ashram, it looks like the Bowery, you know, <laughs> like hell. <laughs> Copens all over the walls, you know, hanging from the seatings. You know, stuff here, there, everywhere. <laughs> Prabhupada walked into a brahmachari ashram. And 
He said, Brahmachari means dirty. <laughs> Prabhupada said, revolutionary clean. So brahmacharis, you should clean that ashram every day. Wash the floors, clean the windows, sweep, order, get, throw things out. Every day, keep that place so spick and span. And you won't have any bugs. And you won't have any problems. Cleanliness is godliness. It's for, for sannyasis, ask them for money. Because <laughs> they got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> for Grihastas, they should also <laughs> ask them. They also should give in charity. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Grihastas, they can't even maintain their Grihasta ashram. They have to work and they can't even keep get by what to speak about giving in charity. But Rupa Goswami... And Prabhupada quotes it at least 20 times in scriptures. Grihastas should give 50% of their income to the Krishna consciousness movement. 50%. And divide the other 50 in, in half, 25% for maintenance and 25% for savings. Like that. And that's the ideal Grihasta life. But who's doing that? <laughs> So, uh, there's some adjustment because of Kali Yuga, but the more we found, I think if you read Bhaktivinoda Thakur's commentary on, uh, Bhak, on Rupa Goswami's verses in the uh, Nectar of Instructions, he gives the ideal understanding of the rules and regulations of Grihastha life. It's called Bhakti Loka, that book. You've seen the book, Bhakti Loka. It's a commentary on one of the principles. I think it's called Satya Vritti. Uh, Sadhu Vritti, Sadhu Vritti. Following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas means executing your rules and regulations of your ashrams. That's what it means. For the brahmacharis and sannyasis, there's one set. For the grihasas, is another set. <laughs> rules and regulations. So follow those rules and regulations. What does Krishna say in Gita? Raga dvaisya vimuktaistu visayam indriyastriyan atma visaya vahedatma prasadam adigaich chiti. What is he saying? By following the regulative principles of freedom, one can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord and be free from all attachment and aversion. So he calls rules and regulations principles of freedom. To do whatever you want means, no, you're not free. You're bound by the rules and regulations of this material world. So if you want to be free, you have to follow rules and regulations. Krishna's guidance. Take shelter under Krishna and follow those rules and regulations. Therefore, one of the ways to fall down is called niyamagraha. That means following rules and regulations just for the sake of following and not knowing why. Or following, not following the rules and regulations and acting, acting whimsically or what we say, what's the other word? Whimsically or capriciously? No, I mean. Huh? There's another word. Yeah. Not following him and doing whatever you want whenever you want. So there's two ways to break that principle. Strict following rules and regulations but not knowing why. The rules and regulations are there to teach you the goal, to help you follow the goal. That's why we have rules and regulations. But they're not the end in themselves. They're a guide, ultimately. The guide for pure devotional service. Any other questions? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna. Um, in, uh, there's that once 
saying how truth has like two opposites simultaneously or something something like that. I don't know exactly how it goes, but... Chinta beta beta tattva? No, where the tr truth has two opposite or opposing views, to be able to hold those views simultaneously. Oh. oh, the quality of a genius, that's mentioned in Nectar of Devotion, that quality of a genius, he can hold two opposing views in his mind at the same time and still be able to function. That's the quality of a gen genius. That's mentioned in Nectar Devotion. It's one of the qualities of Krishna. He's genius. It, um, on one side, it's just like, um, you know, Kali Yuga, people are eating cows, and that's abominable. And then J um, Jada and Madai, how they were so abominable. But Lord Chaitanya's mercy was just like, he forgave them. Yeah. How, how Yamaraj just fainted when he heard about it, I think. Yeah, Jagai and Madai. He so, in, in that sense, with the mercy of the spiritual master only. Mukan karoti vachalam pangu lagite giram yat kripa tanaham bande shiguru dinatarinam. Yeah. We recite that verse sometimes before Bhagavatam class every day. That Krishna's mercy is coming through the spiritual master, and with that mercy, one can, what we say, do the impossible. <laughs> one can do the impossible. Because it's Krishna's mercy. It's coming through Guru, that's all. Guru is the dispenser of the mercy, he's not the creator of the mercy. <laughs> but like a shopkeeper, he's very generous and doesn't make the price too high. He makes the price viable by everyone, <laughs> as long as you have some eagerness. Bode suke kabogai, bode suke kabogai. Lord Nityananda is going everywhere. What is he doing? He's setting up the shopkeeper of the holy name. He says, I'm a merchant. I have a product. Please come and buy. Please bring your money. What is the merchant? Merchandise, the merchandise is the holy name, and what is the money? Faith. So if you have five dollars worth of faith, that's what you get. If you have fifty dollars worth of faith, that's what you get. So faith is the basis of everything. Okay, we're moving a little bit beyond the time here, so I better stop. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Tomorrow, starting at 10.30 in the morning, we'll begin a six-part seminar on Srila Prabhupada. Please attend. I think you'll find it one of the most interesting seminars you have ever experienced in your life. It's all slides. And it's very interactive. Every devotee will be uh, can get involved with speaking, asking questions, and making comments. So it's very interactive. It starts at 10.30. There's a session in the afternoon, a session in the evening, and then Sunday there's also three sessions. So. Kirti Da, where's Kirti Da? Is she still around? Oh. Yeah, it's here.